Every city has nightclubs, social venues where people can mingle with strangers, dance with friends, and escape the monotony of life in an environment of darkness, music, and chaos. As businesses, all nightclubs face the same challenge every week. They have to convince you that their club is the place to be where you'll have the most fun on a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday night. People who go out want to have a good time. If a club is empty, people will just turn around and go somewhere else. If you're a club owner, the question is, how do you make your nightclub a desirable place to be? How do you pack your nightclub with bodies and energy so that more people will come? You can book a famous artist to perform at your venue, but that's not necessarily sustainable and doesn't take into account just how much money the biggest artists charge per show. How can you make your nightclub pop on a regular run-of-the-mill Thursday, Friday, or Saturday night when you don't have any headliners? The answer is promoters. Where there are nightclubs, there are promoters. Promoters are a trade as old as the clubs themselves. Promoters are the invisible men and women who work to turn clubs from slow, empty venues into packed, exciting, desirable destinations every weekend. Cities are defined by their nightlife, and Chicago is home to some of the best clubs in the world. In this modern NBA exclusive, we're diving deep into the secret world of nightclubs and club promoters. We'll ride along with three of Chicago's leading promoters in Derek, Jay, and Eric, observe their hustle, and learn the strategies that they use to throw the hottest parties in town. This episode is sponsored by Kajabi, the ultimate all-in-one platform that helps entrepreneurs build successful online businesses by unlocking predictable reoccurring revenue. As a creator, it's difficult to build a brand as just about every platform, tool, or partner out there that promises to help you asks for a percentage of your profits. As a creator, you deserve all the benefits, upside, and all of the revenue that you earn. At the same time, it takes lots of hours, effort, and unavoidable trial and error to build a great team, to attract talent, and to establish a positive culture for your company. Most creators just end up doing it all or trying to do it all themselves, which ultimately only limits their growth and encourages unsustainability. With Kajabi, you can build your business the way you want and keep every dollar that you earn. And Kajabi gives you all the tools you need to build a profitable business so you don't have to hire a huge team or do it all alone. No matter your niche, Kajabi makes it easy to turn your skills, passions, and experiences into enriching online courses, exclusive membership sites, subscription podcasts, thriving communities, personalized coaching, and more. The best part? Kajabi doesn't take a cut of your revenue because everything is owned and controlled by you, so you keep 100% of what you earn. And with Kajabi, you also get robust analytics, easy payment options, email marketing tools, and customizable website templates all built in. You don't need a huge audience to make sustainable income. There are thousands of creators on Kajabi making six and seven figures with less than 50,000 followers. Right now, Kajabi is offering a free 30-day free trial to start your business if you go to kajabi.com slash modern MBA. That's K-A-J-A-B-I dot com slash modern MBA. Kajabi dot com slash modern MBA and join the creators and entrepreneurs who have made over $6 billion. In the simplest terms, the job of a promoter is to bring people, primarily women, into a nightclub and make the club look desirable, exciting, and attractive at all times. Nightclubs are businesses built on psychology as much as function. To comprehend what they do, we have to accept two realities of life. The first is the law of physical attraction. There are objective measures of attractiveness, and humans, by extension, are attractive, unattractive, or somewhere in between. People who are good-looking get better results in the professional, dating, and social markets, and the same law applies in nightlife. It's a fundamental truth of nightlife that when people go out to a club, a concert, a festival, or a bar, and they see good-looking men and women, they'll stay for longer, especially if they're single. The second reality is the gender division of labor and pay. Through history, men are expected to be breadwinners, and in most cases, do indeed get paid more than women in the same roles. While this all might sound like off-topic, tangential pseudoscience, it's essential to understanding the core business of nightclubs. Like any animal, human males will go to great lengths to pursue their mates. Where there's women, there will be men, and where there's attractive women, there will be men with money. And men with money will peacock to get the attention of attractive women. Nightclubs give men who are looking to impress or chase clout a brief yet material platform for that attention and exclusivity. For a couple thousand dollars, you can flex by buying a private table at a club. Men go where women are, and nightclubs make money off of men who are looking to make a statement. As a result, women are essential to a successful nightclub. In the simplest abstraction, without women, there's no one to flex on, which in turn means no men and no spenders. If a club is empty, slow, has too many dudes, not enough women, 
or not enough attractive women, the spenders won't come. If the spenders do come, they won't stay for long with these bad vibes and they'll take their dollars elsewhere. And as the night progresses, it becomes that much harder for a club to sell those $1,000 private tables and $100 bottles. We can see this dynamic play out with Derek on this Saturday night. The club has just opened and the venue is understandably empty. There's a few people trickling in, the music is playing, the lights are on, but the dance floor is empty. All you have at the club is Derek and his group of ladies at two tables. At this venue there are eight tables. These private tables by design are clearly segregated away from the public areas and the dance floor. There's a bouncer at the entrance to make sure that only the right people are allowed into these private tables. If you don't have a table, your only option is to stand or lean against the bar. Even though the club has just opened, they can't afford to look completely dead with empty floors and empty tables. There has to be some energy to liven things up and it can't be coming from the staff. Promoters are generally assigned to fill one or more tables, and on this night, Derek has filled two. The club has kept the other six tables vacant, so it can readily sell this inventory as the night progresses. In the scenario where the club takes off and sells all its tables, Derek would be bumped and he would need to give up his two tables to the paying customers. But this isn't a big deal because promoters like Derek work in partnership with the clubs. Derek would simply bring his entourage down the street to fill a different club. But for now, none of this is a concern. The only people and energy at the club in this very moment is all coming from Derek's tables. And all the people that you see right now at Derek's tables are the women that he's brought in to help fill the room and breathe energy into this venue. It's no coincidence that Derek and his ladies are seated right in front of the entrance to the club. The first thing that you see when you enter the venue and you turn the corner from the bar are all the women dancing, talking, and having fun at Derek's table. This is the exact value that promoters create for clubs, to give people that strong first impression that the club is popping, or in this case it's about to pop soon, and that it's worth staying around for. While everything is natural, in reality, the existence of women and the placement of them at these exact tables are all deliberate, strategic, and pre-planned. But these ladies aren't paid actresses, they're not pretending to have fun or under contract with Derek or the nightclub. They're real people and Chicago locals who have the freedom to do what they want. If they want to leave this club, if they want to visit friends at a different venue, if they want to go home, they can do so at any time. We know what's in it for clubs to have women, but what's in it for the women themselves? Ladies who come in with promoters like Derek get to sit and drink at his private tables for free. Promoters bring in the women, and the clubs supply the complimentary drinks and tables that will make these women comfortable, happy, and want to stay in the venue for longer. Thus, Derek is not paying out of pocket for these tables or drinks. By having these women present, the club by extension looks good, the place looks busy, the more people will come, the longer they stay, and the better the sales will be for the night. Good promoters like Derek build relationships with every lady at their table and are constantly growing their networks through word of mouth the same way that a good sales rep assembles a Rolodex of business contacts. And just like how a sales rep is only as good as their last deal, a promoter is only as good as their last night. Derek's professionalism is how he's built up his credibility and name over the years in spite of what his face tattoos and appearance might suggest. His name is his brand, and his standards are what elevates him above other promoters, and his power is in the results, which are all things that he can't jeopardize even as he scales. His tables get priority service, he gets to keep his tables when a big artist performs, he's the last to get bumped on a busy night, and he enjoys a deeper rapport with the club staff as a familiar, respected, and trusted face who's rolling up his sleeves every weekend to help make the club successful. Derek tonight is even elevating the experience by surprising the ladies at his table with bottle service that he's paying for out of his own pocket. It's relatively unorthodox for promoters to buy bottles for their own tables, but these are all ways in which Derek invests for the future. That way, after tonight, these same ladies who were blown away by this experience will hit up Derek first when they want to go out again and will even recommend him to their friends. It's important to note that these ladies are not getting high-end bottles like Classe Azul, Dom, and Ace of Spades for free. What they get are standard, everyday, inexpensive drinks and mixers, and free is better than nothing at all. Yet for an expert promoter like Derek, filling his tables with ladies is just the beginning of his night. So there's a hundred different promotion companies in the city. What do I offer that they don't? I mean, everybody's got bottles, everybody's got this, everybody's got that. But at the end of the day, who gave them the best experience is what's really going to sell them and bring them to you and keep them coming back out with your company. Derek serves as an all-in-one chaperone, club liaison, and bodyguard of sorts for the women that he's brought in. His job is to make sure that they're all comfortable, have a great time, and get home safe once the night ends. 
He strategically positions himself like an additional barrier between the public areas and his tables, and he maintains this position through the night. From this elevated position, Derek can see everything happening at his tables right in front of him, but also make himself available for anyone that's looking for him. He monitors the vibes of his tables, entertains any ladies who seem bored, and makes the effort to make a personal connection with each guest. From open to close, Derek is watching closely to make sure that no one, whether it's strangers from the floor or neighboring tables, is messing with the drinks, stealing purses, or harassing his ladies. Some of the women will naturally flow from the table to the dance floor, even as the club is filling up, as the table is getting crowded, and the people around him are partying, he's not joining in, dancing, goofing around, or pounding drinks. When Derek's not watching his tables, he's on his phone coordinating with the next wave of ladies coming in, keeping track of the arrivals and departures, posting Instagram stories to build his brand, managing his team, and remotely checking in with male clients at other clubs that his company is managing around Chicago that same night. Chicago nightlife is an opaque, connection-based world where you'll find everyone on Instagram and next to no one on LinkedIn. Word travels fast and reputation is everything. Basically, promoters come and go. And the main reason of that is because they get to fool themselves and they just, they crash out. Then they disrespect women, which is like, you're in hospitality, that's the main, that's the last thing you should do. By developing close relationships with club owners, he can create the best possible experience for the ladies that he brings in. By midnight, the club is popping and Derek's tables are the life of this party. The women at his tables from opening have generated this momentum and energy that has now spilled out onto the dance floor. You have guys buying tables and bottles all around Derek to join in on the fun in this exclusive section. At opening, the only area with life was Derek's tables, and now two hours later, the whole place is vibing on its own. Everywhere you look, people are having fun and dancing. No one would have suspected that Derek is a promoter and the women at his tables were technically planted, but at the same time, no one would have really cared. When people go to clubs, they want to go to a place where they'll have the most fun, meet the most people, and experience the best energy. This is the power of expert promoters like Derek, who can jumpstart a party, breathe life into a venue, and energize a club without any headliners on a random Saturday night. And even as the club is getting more lit, Derek is sitting in the exact same spot doing the same things as he was at opening. Watching, working, messaging, and planning. Based on the number of women that he brought in and the number of tables that he sold for his male clients, Derek earned between $400 to $800 from this club tonight. This is only what's happening at just one of many clubs in Chicago on Saturday night. A few blocks ahead of where Derek is, we find Jay, a fourth grade math teacher who moonlights as one of Chicago's best promoters. Jay is working at a different club that has significantly fewer tables, but a much larger dance floor. And while every club has its own layout, the principles remain the same. By tagging along with Jay, we can understand and see some of the nuances of what it takes to be a great promoter. There's actually a famous artist coming to perform tonight at this club, and the event has been well advertised all over social media. This is not the first time that this artist has performed here, and every time the lines to get in have wrapped around the block. As a result, there's no need for a promoter like Jay to fill space for tonight, as the headliner is guaranteed to energize the venue and to draw in the crowd. But instead of saying they don't need promoters at all tonight, the club has put out requirements. The club doesn't want to just be busy, they want to look like they're the best place in town to the hundreds that come through the door tonight and to the thousands tomorrow on social media. So tonight's vibe was, you know, it's Summer Rae. Uh, a lot of people want to see Summer Rae, of course. Um, when it comes to me promoting and everything, they want to sell tables, of course. They want to sell big tables. Um, kind of like the, the minimum for a table tonight is like 1500 to 2000 Usually if it was like a night where it was just a, uh, a local artist, it would be kind of between 800, maybe even 1200. Um, but when it, when it comes to big artists, it's, it's like really between 1500 and 2000. And then when it comes to like girls, which, which is my job, like you know, just invite girls to the table, make sure the place is popping. Um, they have ex kind of like expectations. So they wanted the baddies, 10 out of 10s, the 12 out of 10s, the top quality, the, the, the top of the batch, pretty much. They wanted the best looking girls for today to make the venue, you know, look like it's popping for house clients to come out, buy tables, you know, that, that plays a big part on the club itself. Jay's MO is to keep the ladies flowing into this venue, and he doesn't have to do much to sell the opportunity to his network. For these women, the opportunity to watch this artist perform live, to skip the line, to drink, and sit at a private table all for free is too good to pass up. But to maximize earnings, the club has made Jay and all the promoters fit all their ladies into this one table so that they can keep the rest to sell to paying customers. 
The table is small, and there's not enough room or much value for Jay to stand there the whole night once the venue gets packed, especially at his height. As the night unfolds, Jay gives up his spot at the table to his ladies and moves around the venue all while working on his phone. He's messaging the next wave of women, answering questions, providing directions, monitoring ETAs, and selling tables to the men in his network. Jay's magic is in his numbers. Most promoters rely on Instagram posts, flyers and Facebook groups, and word of mouth to build up their networks. This organic approach to growth is effective but ultimately slow. With the help of a childhood friend, Jay has built a system in which his Rolodex of men and women grow every hour every day, even when he's at his day job and not just on the nights that he's working. In business, knowing what you're good at is 80% of the battle, and Jay's strengths are his in-person skills. His friend, in contrast, is great with computers, has a killer texting game, but doesn't drink and has weaker interpersonal skills. What Jay and his friend have done is they've combined their strengths and they've built a system that aggregates all the potential sources of where to find women and men who want to go clubbing. Jay has profiles on Tinder, Hinge, and Bumble where he writes in his bio that he's a promoter, the clubs that he works at, what women can expect when they match, and all of these accounts are actually managed by his friend. His friend swipes right on everyone, handles every conversation, answers questions, directs every match to Jay's Instagram, and records where each woman wants to go clubbing, their availability, requests, and musical interests. The last part is especially key, since every nightclub specializes in a certain type of music. By the time Friday rolls around, Jay's friend has already organized for him all the contacts based on their likelihood of response and where the criteria of the club matches the preference of the individual. Then it's off to Jay, like tonight, to do the rest in person. The ladies that Jay brought in tonight thought they were talking to Jay, but in most cases, they were actually talking to his friend behind the scenes the entire time. This profile, right, we just pretty much, um, we show, like, who I am, we explain, like, what, what I'm doing, um, what I'm into, my interests, is, like, and I would say, like, I would never travel about clubbing. I'm known for DJing, of course. I'm a big, um, a big DJ here. Um, and pretty much, I'm going to go here to Tinder, you know, we just kind of explain what I'm doing, what's my job, um, what la what ladies can do when they come to the club, when they come in and say my name at the table and everything. So pretty much with that being said, um, they, they can come in, um, depending on the artist, depending on the night, depending on how big the night is. Um, when they come in, they will say, you know, they will say my name, they will say JR Access, of course. Um, and pretty much they would, they'll come in, I would come and get them. Um, we would just walk them to the table, and then from there, they just pretty much they'd sit down, drink, have fun, you know, just typical things that, the, um, the, you know, ladies would do at the club. And then from there, you know, it just goes on the rest of the night. You see on Instagram, there's a lot of messages to the point where, like, I can't even scroll down to the point where, like, they have to load. It's just a lot of messages. Usually we keep certain girls in our primary messages, and then in general right now, okay, so you did move them. So in general, we, we change up throughout the day. So pretty much in general, um, we have our top quality girls, and then in our private messages, we have the girls that kind of want to go to similar places, but like, uh, kind of like at the level of like, okay, yeah, they can go to this club, they can go to this club, but we kind of usually separate them. In our general messages, we usually have the top-notch quality girls, 10 out of 10s, the clubs that we know that they can get into no matter how they look or what they look like, because just to the fact they're just like that quality, that top quality that the, cl um, the club want. And then in our primary messages, we really have the girls that just want to go anywhere, you know, just want to party and everything. Um, but they're not like top notch. Their system and network has gotten so expansive that they get inquiries from people out of state who are coming to Chicago for a weekend and want to go clubbing. And there are just so many messages every week that they have to regularly clear out the backlog on every single app just to separate the new from the old. Backed by this system, Jay brings in roughly 150 to 250 women every weekend across multiple clubs in Chicago. As the lines start to wrap around the block, it becomes harder for Jay to bring women in. With the venue almost at capacity, the bouncers outside are getting a lot more selective about who they let into the club. They're taking measure of how each person is dressed, how they look, if they seem like spenders, and what they'll add to the crowd. The only people that are getting to skip the line and aren't having a hard time getting in in this freezing cold are the ones buying tables. Not even Jay's ladies are getting a pass, and Jay has to personally vouch for them to get them into the venue. How Jay handles this scenario is a great example of how important connections and etiquette are in nightlife. Promoters are ultimately outsiders. In the org chart of a nightclub, they simply don't exist. Promoters are not employees of the club. They work alongside the venue staff, but they're not co-workers. In the controlled chaos of a nightclub, name dropping gets you nowhere, and even a longtime promoter as respected as Jay still ranks below in priority to a paying customer. Good promoters understand this hierarchy and when to liquidate their political capital to make things happen. In this part of the venue, what the bouncer says goes. 
Bouncers are more than just security. They're how the club enforces its preferences and hold the promoters accountable. It's bouncers who protect the club's interests and unilaterally decide if any individual fits the club's requirements of attractiveness, and this applies even to the people that the promoters are bringing in. Bouncers can find any reason to deny entry to anyone, and a good promoter needs to advocate to get their ladies in. Jay has to exercise patience, and only once the bouncer has shown that he's ready to listen can Jay make a case for why his women should be let in. Despite his long-standing reputation at this venue, Jay ultimately doesn't get any special treatment. After a quick back and forth, Jay reaches a deal with the bouncer. So, so kind of like what's happening right now is pretty much like I said, you know, it's like when girls come on this back here, I have to negotiate something pretty much. Um, so like to, for example, right today, there's a group right here that's behind me. Um, pretty much um, the only negotiation was them for the pay 20 dollars. That was the only negotiation. If not, then they can come in. So that's pretty much what they're doing right now. They just pretty much charge them 20 dollars. For most of the women that Jay is bringing in tonight, this is actually their first time meeting him in person. Jay takes the extra step to make these women feel at ease by waiting for them outside before they arrive, introducing himself, escorting them through security, and walking them into the venue. Once the group is inside the club, he points out where the table is, how to get in, how to reach out to him if they have a problem, but for the ladies that Jay is bringing in, he explains to them that they can go to the table and get their free drinks, but they can only sit and stay there once they see someone else leave. The small table has complicated logistics in that it's not easy for Jay to keep track of who's where. His ladies are spread all over the venue. Some are at the table, others are at the bar, and a few more are downstairs at coat check. Jay makes himself tall and walks through the entire venue regularly, so it's easy for his ladies to spot him if they need anything. And sure enough, another unforeseen issue occurs. One of his ladies calls over to him and points out a man who's been harassing her friends on the dance floor. Jay immediately tails the culprit, reports the problem to the nearest staff member, points out the man in question, explains the situation to security, and makes certain with management that the man is never allowed back into the venue. This is something that only Jay can pull off given his familiarity and political capital at this venue. Because the staff know him and he knows them, they can take Jay's words at face value and instantly act. Once the situation is resolved, Jay checks back in with the lady, he provides an update, makes sure she and her friends are okay, apologizes for what happened, and thanks her for raising the issue. In an environment as chaotic, dark, and crowded as a nightclub, communication can be difficult, trust is expensive, and simple messages turn into long-winded games of telephone. As a promoter, you have to use the limited tools you have at your disposal to provide a good, safe, and comfortable experience for all the people you bring in, and for Jay to do this as an outsider is no small feat. On this Saturday night, Jay brought in the most women out of any promoter at this venue and earned $150 at a flat rate of $5 per lady. But since Jay also sold tables to the men in his network, he earned an extra $350 for a total of $500. And just like Derek before, these are just the numbers from one venue. As a promoter, you can take your entourage to other venues and get paid multiple times in the same night for having the same people. Jay eventually brought his group from this club to a different club and earned a grand total of $990 for this Saturday night. As we've seen with Jay and Derek, promoting is ultimately a numbers game where the more women you bring in, the more you get paid. But is it possible to fill a club on Wednesdays and Thursdays? Can a promoter create an experience that's fun for men and women, and along the way generate even greater business for a club? Meet Eric Boss, a veteran of the Chicago nightlife scene who's redefining the value that promoters can create. It's 9 p.m. on a Thursday, and Eric is at his apartment doing the final touches for his house and sushi party. He's coordinating with venue staff on his phone, reviewing his to-do list, texting his team, and posting Instagram stories to hype up his party. No detail is too small and no part of the experience can be compromised. There's bubble guns, cash cannons, sunglasses, megaphones, light sticks, and even custom fortune cookies branded with Eric's Instagram handle, all of which will be given away for free over the course of the party. There's so many props that the only way to get it all from his apartment to the venue is with moving boxes and in checked luggage. Eric is a one-man army. He's the planner, designer, host, and maestro for each of his parties, and this Thursday is no different. Nightclubs generally only operate Fridays to Sundays. Unless there's a famous artist or a major holiday, there's typically not enough customers for a club to justify opening Monday to Thursday. The target audience for Eric's parties are not socialites and wealthy elites, but rather everyday men and women. There's no ticket, no cover at the door, no strict RSVPs, and no emphasis on the traditional nightlife factors of gender, attractiveness, or wealth. 
For club owners, Eric's value proposition is powerful. The immediate impact is one is that they wouldn't have that many people. They wouldn't have that much revenue. They wouldn't have that allure on a, on a weekday. It just wouldn't happen. And it gives them a different demographic too, because automatically when I am with a, a, a club, I do my party, you're getting my network, you're getting my social media network, you're getting my network of friends, people that come to my parties that support. Eyes on the party, eyes on the venue that would not normally be there automatically. Now I'm doing the marketing and I'm also giving the experience so that when people come there, number one, it's different than any other night a place is open. So it's giving them an experience there that they're not going to get any other time. And it's definitely something that's, you saw, very, very fun, but something that's, it, now they're going to remember that place forever, <laughs> forever. They're going to remember that. Um, and it's just one of those parties that it just takes one time because any other time they go there, it's not going to feel the same. It's not going to look the same. It's not going to be the same. So that will be forever etched in their head. Why, why Ben News bring me on is because, uh, at least with two of my parties in particular, is because I set the tone for the rest of the night. Whereas if some, some parties are only late night. And so if that party was just to start late night, it would be dead right from the start. But that's why with my parties, I set the tone, create the vibe where people could come in and it's already an environment where it could thrive at that point. Otherwise it would not. On the way to the club, Eric picks up sushi from a fancy restaurant, which he'll later hand out to every person at the party. And he never stops responding to the hundreds of messages blowing up his phone. Based on who comes into the venue and when, every party to some degree takes on its own energy, life, and tempo. Eric arrives at the venue, he sets up the station, he reviews the game plan with his assistants, and the party begins shortly after as the first people trickle in. Even at opening, Eric is in the thick of it. He's running around, thanking people for coming out, reminding his team to interact with every single guest, handing out fortune cookies, making it rain with a cash cannon, blasting sirens on his megaphone, handing out bubble guns to anyone who looks bored, and giving pointers to the DJ on what to play and when. Eric doesn't just plan the party and host it by name. He is the party and he's the conductor of this orchestra. Everything that happens has a purpose. And Eric is constantly reading the room to determine when and how to elevate the energy. Every prop, snack, and entertainer are all surprises that Eric strategically reveals to the crowd as the night progresses. Even though Eric throws these parties every week, there's just no set formula. Tonight he's handing out fortune cookies and sushi, but on other nights and at other parties, he's given away fries from McDonald's, Frosties from Wendy's, sliders from White Castle, and chocolate strawberries. Before all this, Eric had worked over 10 years as a traditional promoter for various clubs around Chicago. He had long felt that the conventional focus on filling tables with women to be too simplistic. In his mind, if a venue is busy, if the space is packed, and if people feel like they're part of the party, that's ultimately all that matters. Eric's parties, like tonight, are by design inclusive, non-pretentious, unorthodox environments where you don't have to be rich to be a 10 out of 10 or to flex to have a good time. Everywhere you look on this Thursday night, something is happening. Bubbles are flying in the air, snacks are being handed out for free, there's a body painting show on stage, and bills are raining down from the ceiling. And since people are seeing Eric champion and embody these vibes all night long, the energy is contagious. Eric gives and people give back. Not everyone at this club is here for Eric's party, but the energy is so dynamic that they just end up staying. Sure enough, as the night unfolds, people start buying tables, bottle service, and drinks at the bar, and Eric makes himself present to connect with every individual. But even as the party picks up towards midnight, Eric gets even busier. He flies around from the floor to the kitchen to the storage, setting up the lights for the next entertainer, checking in on attendees, delegating to his team, and coordinating the headline event with his staff. The climax of this party tonight is body sushi, where attendees can eat sushi off the body of a woman that Eric wheels around on the dance floor. And this is just house and sushi. At Eric's other parties, you have pole dancers, sword swallowers, fire breathers, dominatrixes, and more. Nothing ever repeats, and every party has its own theme, entertainers, and snacks. The only time Eric gives himself a break is to scarf down his dinner consisting of a single protein bar. But even then, he's still wired in. He's responding to messages, posting stories to get more people to come to the party, replenishing props, and monitoring the vibes. As soon as he's done eating, Eric is right back on the dance floor directing, coordinating, and interacting. 
Eric's parties by design peak at midnight and then conclude at 1 a.m., so the vibes, energy, and people carry on until the club closes at 4 a.m. The bartenders can barely keep up, the bottles keep flowing, the tables are packed, and people keep streaming in. No other club in Chicago is this lively, animated, and crowded on this Thursday night, and for the people that are coming out, this venue is the hottest place to be. This, in a nutshell, is the value that Eric creates. By the end of his party, Eric is spent, but even as Eric decompresses, he can't ever fully turn off. He's still on his phone, catching up on messages, posting highlights of tonight's party to his followers, and pushing this club for anyone still looking to go out on this Thursday night. In business, greater value creation often translates to greater value capture, and Eric is a great example of this. Eric can fill a club between 150 to 200 people on a single night with one of his parties. While clubs pay promoters between $5 to $7 flat for every woman that they bring in, Eric earns a $500 base and takes 10% of the bar revenue for each of his parties. On this Thursday night for House & Sushi, Eric earned $1,875. After paying for the snacks, props, DJs, and entertainers, his take-home was $1,100. With four parties in Chicago every week, Eric nets between $3,000 to $4,000 a week on the low end. While the money is solid, it's not his primary motivation. Chicago is his home, and these parties are like Eric's children. They're labors of love, and that passion is what keeps him going every Wednesday to Saturday, every week, all year long. Sometimes during the night, I will... Things move so fast, and I never really get to stop and smell the roses, right? And certain times, I will just stop there and just look around. And then I'll see a person with a bubble gun here. I'll see girls screaming over here. I see a person with eating the food that I gave them there. And I just say to myself, like, this is, I created that, you know? And it's validation there because it's, it's what I do. It's what I live, eat, and breathe. Um, and it's experience that you don't get anywhere else. And that's what I try to do. I, I'm constantly thriving to do things that you don't feel or see other places. And I think I do a really good job at it. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm now doing it four times a week. So but it's constantly just thinking of different things that are, number one, able to do in a club, um, because there's certain things that you can't just do in a club. Uh, and I feel like this is something that's, you don't get anywhere else. I haven't seen anywhere else. So I feel like that's a pretty good starting point. Um, but I've also found too that usually anything that you play with when you're a toy, you know, I mean, when you're a kid, anything you play with when you're a kid, is translatable into the club when you're, <laughs> you know, when you're partying. Um, and I feel that's another thing I do is I, inter I unleash the inner child in people and I see it constantly. When you give a bubble gun to a girl or to anyone, usually the elation, the, the screaming, the joy, like you don't see that anywhere else. <laughs> so I just feel like maybe it's not that important there at the moment, but it definitely feels good, looks good, and I know that person's feeling good. His long-term strategy is to bring his parties beyond Chicago to help drive business for other club owners on their slow nights and to give people in other cities an unorthodox, inclusive, non-judgmental nightlife experience that they can't get anywhere else. Nightclubs are a secretive business where information and numbers are rarely ever shared with outsiders. But through the grind of Eric, Jay, and Derek, we can see that Chicago nightlife is ultimately no different than any other industry, where the core business principles of differentiation, professionalism, and value creation still apply. From the outside, being a club promoter looks like a fun and glamorous job where you're paid to party, but in reality, there's nothing easy about it. To be great at any job requires hard work, and while most of the world is in bed sleeping from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. on a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, people like Jay, Eric, and Derek are all working, making the nightclubs in their town the hottest place to be.